Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about web development and web standards and we're going to talk about some of the important web standards that there are out there, however there are lots to, to cover in general. In today's video we'll talk about web development and three really important web standards as well. So what is web development? Website development refers to the actual building and construction of a website. There's different methods of website development and there's, it's worth paying attention to those methods and what kind of a website development you are getting um, for your business website. So web development is the process of constructing a website and ensures the infrastructure of a website is stable, secure and functional. A lack of strong website development puts websites at risk of not functioning properly, losing traffic, decreased sales and possible security concerns. It is also worth noting that the, custom, the consumer purchase decisions are increasingly determined by the user experience on websites. Web development ensures that the purchasing process is smooth for e-commerce websites and everything is functioning efficiently, almost behind the scenes. There are many methods for constructing a website. They can be built manually with in-depth handwritten code or with, um, or with free and user-friendly website development platforms like WordPress. Pre-built website development platforms like WordPress are known as WYSIWYG editors, what you see is what you get, where you basically just have to drag website elements into place. Building a website from scratch is a lot more difficult and requires more expertise, but even then, with pre-built website templates, it still takes some time, patient, knowledge, and still uh, a lot of effort as well. No matter what way you decide to build your website, or no matter what way your, your website gets built for you, you need to ensure that it's following the web standards uh, that are put forward by the World Wide Web Consortium, or the W3C, to ensure not only that your user gets the best experience possible, but that your website remains functional, stable, and secure at all times. So when it comes to web development, uh, a web developer is someone who essentially is the architect of your website. They will construct and manage the website, ensuring that it has a strong core infrastructure. Web developers are highly skilled in creating websites through a variety of platforms and programs. Their main aim is to ensure that website function uh, functions properly and are secure. Some other functionality, uh, some other tasks and roles that a web, web developer will do is ensure that website navigation is smooth, fix any hosting issues that can come that users can come across, create URLs, optimize the SEO practices on the website, increase performance, increase capacity, ensure security and functionality. Websites should be functional as well as aesthetically pleasing um, and they should be able to build a strong and engaging website um, as well. It can be a complex process but a poorly developed websites that don't follow the industry standards will frustrate your visitors and may even affect your brand's reputation and potential sales. A skilled web developer will understand and know of all the web standards that are in place and will be able to create a high performing website that best suits your business and industry needs. So what are web standards? Web standards are essentially rules and guidelines established by the World Wide Web Consortium, or the W3C, and it's developed to promote consistency in the design code which makes up a web page. Basically, if the guideline for the markup language uh, defines how a web page display uh, in a visitor's window, there are lots of web standards out there, um, things like cross-browser compatibility, so making sure that your web page works across as many devi uh, devices as possible and as many browsers as possible. Um, then there's accessibility, so meaning that your websites um, are usable by as many different kinds of people as possible. Um, and these are related concepts such as diversity and inclusion, inclusive design, things like that. This includes people with um, any kind of visual impairments, hearing impairments, cognitive disabilities or physical disabilities. Um, it also goes beyond people with disabilities. It's about how, it's, uh, about how young or old people or diff people from different cultures, people using mobile devices or people with unreliable or slow internet connections all fall under the umbrella of, umbrella of accessibility and you need to make sure that your website fo uh, follows as much of the accessibility rules as much as possible. There's also... Um, many more to think about. In this video, we'll talk about the, uh, what we consider the three most important ones, which involves responsive web design, uh, performance, and, pri and security as well.
So responsive web design is the practice of making your website functionality and layouts flexible so that they can automatically adapt to different browsers. Um, an obvious, obvious example is a website that is laid out one way in widescreen browser on, on the desktop, but displays as a more compact single column layout on mobile. So for example, we have this desktop layout here. But on mobile, obviously, uh, while the content is still the same, the layout is slightly different, everything kind of stacks. And this just ensures that the user can still see all the information clearly. Um, nothing's too tightly packed in, nothing's too squished, nothing's missing. Um, and just in, just making sure that the user navigate user journey on mobile is just as optimized as it is on desktop. Responsive web design makes websites faster, more accessible, and easier to navigate. And it makes uh, it easier for users to then find the information that they're looking for, and then encourages them to stay on your site for longer. Um, what we've noticed a lot with uh, our websites and client websites is that people more and more are coming onto website using their mobile phones. So if a site isn't loading fast enough or if it's untidy and unclear on mobile, um, it's very much likely that they will click off and go to another site. Um, and this will affect something called your bounce rate. So your bounce rate is essentially the percentage of visitors to a particular website who navigate away from the site after only viewing one page. Um, so if you have this particularly high bounce rate, then you know that the page that you are currently, that the user are currently landing on, usually it's the home page, but it could be any other page. Um, it's either not well designed, it's not accessible on mobile, um, or it's too slow to load and it's something that you need to improve on. So websites with a particularly high bounce rate um, will rank lower on search engines because it lets Google know that this website isn't um, either useful to the user or it's not easy to navigate. So you want to make sure with re responsive web design that you have that um, there on your site and that your site is accessible, is easy to navigate on not just desktop but also mobile and tablet as well. Um, in terms of testing your site for uh, responsive, uh, responsive web design, what you can do is for free, you can just right click on your website and click on inspect and use the inspect tool to view your device, you view your site on different devices. So if you look at the top here, you can choose some popular designs, uh, you can choose some popular um, devices and then just see how that looks uh, on those devices. Um, and then you can also set your own dimensions as well. This isn't fully accurate, but it will give you an overall idea and any kind of really bad problem spots you can kind of fix uh, once they've been pointed out to you as well. Browser Stack is another tool that you can use and it essentially is a web and mobile testing platform that provides developers with the ability to test their websites and mobile applications across uh, thousands of different browsers, different operating systems, uh, different mobile devices as well. Um, so it's a much more accurate way of testing your um, web application, web project um, across different uh, browsers and things like that. Um, unlike the inspect element tool, browser stack isn't free. You can uh, get started for free. They do have a free trial um, and they do have a demo as well. Um, other than that, then you will need to go for one of their payment plans um, to start using their software, but it is a really good software to use if you want to really thoroughly test your application uh, on different browsers and different platforms as well. You can also uh, test from anywhere and at any time on the cloud and it allows your team to kind of connect tools that they already use to kind of capture bugs, file any issues and notify the uh, right team members right away without leaving um, any of their dashboards. Um, so you can go for as little as $29 a month but there is an enterprise um, and team uh, plan as well um, that you will need to get in contact. But it is a really accurate way and a lot of developers would use this um, to make sure that their website is responsive and also make sure that then it's um, following the web standards put out by W3C to make sure that they uh, make sure that your website is responsive uh, on different platforms and different websites as well. So another really important web standard to think about is performance. So performance means getting your website to load as quickly as possible. Um, but also making them intuitive and easy to use so that users don't get frustrated and go somewhere else um, for their website. Um, when it comes to 
uh, your website, testing your performance as much as possible um, is important as websites are changing constantly. If you are making changes on your website, adding new plugins, adding new content, the performance uh, can be affected, whether that's uh, resulting in a good performance speed or a lower performance speed um, is something that you need to, con to continuously be testing for. In terms of performance testing tools, there's loads of free ones out there. Um, one of the best ones out there is GT Metrics. So GT Metrics is a website performance analytics tool. Um, and it's basically what it does is it will analyze your website and your web page and monitor it for speed and will also essentially provide you a report of a list of actionable recommend recommendations that you can do to improve the speed of your site. So all you need to do is go on to gtmetrics.com, um, enter the URL that you want to analyze, and then it'll start uh, analyzing your, your site. So you can see now that um, the report's been analyzed and you're basically given a grade and you're given a performance percentage as well. Um, and at the bottom, you can see a list of issues that uh, GT Metrics will put in order of importance. So what's causing the most issues and then what's causing um, sort of a little amount, a low amount of issues as well. And you would essentially use this as, as almost uh, like a task list and you'd go through and see which issues are causing the most. Um, issues and try and fix those as well. Um, GT Metrics is really thorough in that um, it will give you exact in-depth um, examples of what's actually causing the issue. So for example, this one here, um, avoid enormous network payloads. Um, and what that means is basically asking you to uh, reduce your page size. So there are uh, some features uh, on your website that is, some elements on your website that is um, contributing to a large fi uh, page size. Um, and what it does is it tells you exactly what well, what, um, what those elements are. Um, some of them are videos, some of them are uh, image files, things like that. A lot of the times it is image files. So there are different uh, plugins that you can use to make sure that your website is optimized for uh, page speeds and things like that. One of the options, one of the plugins out there is a plugin called Smush, which is an image optimizer plugin. Um, and the way it works is it's a free plugin that you can uh, install into your WordPress website. And what it'll do is it will uh, bulk optimize all the images on your site and compress them in a way that it won't lose quality, but it will reduce the file size. Um, and that way it'll help reduce the, what they call the network payloads um, and essentially give you a smaller file, um, but won't reduce the quality. So it's um, a plugin that you can use uh, on your WordPress website. Um, another, the, but the best way to uh, ensure that the image that you're using um, isn't going to be uh, too big or is optimized is to optimize it first before you upload it um, and then upload it onto your site. So using websites like Tiny uh, PNG, um, this is a free online uh, image compressor and essentially uses a smart lossy compression to reduce your file size. Um, but it won't sort of decrease the quality. So you can upload all your images onto here first and then upload it onto your website. And this will ensure that um, you're, already up, you're already uploading already optimized images as opposed to uploading them first, causing a lower, uh, a high load time and then optimizing after. It's better just to make sure that they're optimized first and then uploading onto your website. As mentioned before, it's really important that uh, you are continuously t testing your website performance. Um, for when you first run a test, you'll be given a list of um, improvements and recommendations. And what you should do is go through each of these one by one and try and fix um, as many of the issues as possible, whether that's compressing images, adding CDNs, um, as it, using caching plugins. All of this will mean that you will um, have essentially a faster website. Um, but then once you're done with that, run the report again, see if those issues are actually fixed. Um, and then every so often, maybe once a month, uh, run the report again as, as plugins update, um, as you add changes to your site, there will be new issues, there will always be new 
fixes and there will always be load times to decrease as well so it's really important when you um, audit a site and when you uh, when you think about performance you want to make sure it's something that you're continuously working on um, if you like we ha we can um, we have videos uh, explaining exactly how to use GT metrics and other performance testing uh, tools as well and also how to audit your network or your website um, appropriately Lastly, the other uh, web standard that you want to be thinking about is security. So security refers to constructing your website in a secure way so that malicious users can't steal information contained on it from you or your users. Um, when you have a, when you are building a website, depending on what kind of website you're building, you, you might be handling sensitive information like passwords, credit card, debit card information, even email signups. Um, all um, all of those can be considered sensitive information and as a website owner um, and as someone that can be collecting those information you have a responsibility to ensure that they are being collected in a secure way and are being stored in a secure way and aren't being shared um, um, like pointlessly so um, there's lots of steps that you can take um, to make sure that your website is secure if you're running a WordPress website several things that you can do involves even uh, installing a WordPress security plugin a WordPress security plugin protects your website from malware boost force attacks hacking attempts um, and things like that security plugins are designed to prevent hat attacks and provide complete security reports for your WordPress website um, and one of the popular security plugins for WordPress is Security. So Security, uh, security is the industry leader in WordPress security. It's one of the best WordPress security plugins on the market and they offer a basic free uh, uh, plugin that can help you harden your WordPress security and scan your website for common threats. Um, but the real value is actually in their paid plans which come with the, uh, one of the best WordPress firewalls protections out there. A firewall will help will help you block brute force attacks and malicious, malicious attacks from accessing your WordPress dashboard. Security firewall um, filters, um, the way it works is that it filters out bad traffic even before it reaches your server. So they also serve static content from their own CDN servers. Apart from security, their DNS level firewall with CDN gives you tremendous performance boost and speeds up your website as well. Um, and most of that is included in one of their paid plans, um, but you can get a lot for their free plans as well. Um, and, a lot, and most importantly, they also offer to clean up your WordPress site, even if it gets attacked by malware at no additional cost. You can even take a website already affected by malware and they will clean it up for you. Um, Security is a really popular uh, Word, WordPress um, security plugin um, and it's one that's often used on quite a lot of websites as well. Another really popular one is iTheme Security. Um, so iThe iTheme Security is a WordPress security plugin uh, Um, and it offers a really nice, clean sort of user interface with lots of options. It comes with file integrity checks, security hardening, limiting login attempts, strong password enforcement, 404 detections, and brute force protection as well. Um, the only difference between that um, and security is that it does not include a website firewall. It also doesn't include its own malware scanner, and it uses security's site check malware scanner as well. WP Scan is a really unique WordPress security plugin because it uses its own manually curated WordPress vulnerability database and is updated daily by dedicated WordPress security specialists and community members as well. They will scan your site for over 20, 21,000 vulnerabilities in WordPress plugins, themes and course software as well. You can schedule automatic, uh, automated daily scans and get email notifications of the results. They have a free security API suitable for most websites, but you can also upgrade to the paid plan if you have a larger site and use a lot of plugins. As well as the security plugins, you also want to make sure that the hosting provider that you choose um, is also uh, reliable and secure enough as well, because a lot of attacks that come can come from a weak uh, hosting provider and, secure and server as well. Um, for WordPress especially, one of the best hosting providers, especially for security, is WP Engine. Uh, WP Engine is VIP WordPress hosting. They offer has hassle-free hosting. They also offer fast and robust servers that can handle anything. Um, and your website uh, being stored here is 
practically hacker proof. Um, they have really good customer service um, and they basically, because they are a WordPress uh, hosting, provider, uh, posting pro provider, it's, um, you essentially have a team of WordPress experts on your side for assistance. Um, one of their main strengths though is that they have very advanced security tools um, to make sure that your website is uh, protected as much as possible. Um, WP Engine offer a number of premium security features. Um, the WordPress core is automatically updated to the latest version for you all the time. Um, and WP Engine also thoroughly test any major core updates before upgrading their customers. They have proprietary intrusion detection and prevention system to block any DDoS attacks, brute force attacks, malware, JavaScript injections, and things like that. They also partner with third-party security firms to conduct regular code interviews and security audits as well. Uh, your security is guaranteed, so if you get hacked, WP Engine will fix it for free. So those are just some examples of uh, really important web standards to follow. Um, web standards, it's really important that you abide by web technologies and the standards because it ensures that assistive technologies and browsers together have the best chance of rendering content in an accessible and meaningful way to all kinds of users as well. If you like these videos, please if you like these videos, please feel free to check out our other videos. We have lots of videos on how to use um, performance uh, measuring skills, how to run SEO audits, um, and if you'd also like to get in contact to see how we can help you with your design or development of your website, uh, please get in contact, and uh, we'll see how we can help you out. Thank you.